Hi all, Corgi Junior's Land Rover Recovery Truck here. Hope you're doing well. My first video of 2023 and it's another toy haul from my mate's vintage toy shop in Warwick. I know I went there in December, but I just didn't get time to do an upload video for that. So I've got time this weekend now that I've been. So I thought, why not? So um, yeah, as ever, we'll go through in alphabetical order. And there's one extra item at the end, which isn't technically a toy, but we'll show it anyway because it came from my mate's shop, so that still applies, doesn't it? Doesn't it? No? Alright, well, we're doing it anyway. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoy the review. So, going in alphabetical order, as we usually do with these things, starting at C, Corgi. The first car that I picked out from my mate's shop is this Corgi Whiz Wheels. Mini Cooper S. It's really nice. I've never ever seen a Whiz Wheels Mini from Corgi. Um, only sort of traditional Corgi toys. Um, more recent Corgi, mi more recent Corgi models of Minis, and obviously Corgi Juniors. And it's really nice. It's got the 177 number that I believe was one of the numbers of one of the Minis that won the 1960s Monte Carlo Rally. It's got little diamond lights in the headlights and it's got all the stickers that are still there they're still a little bit they may be a little bit tatty but uh, they're all right it's got both the spare wheels on the top it's got the number plate sticker that's just still about hanging on there's no scratches in the perspex in the windscreens the base is still good in terms of its colors all the body is yellow sort of a very bright ye lemon yellow and the base is painted black so that's the first model from Corgi. The next Corgi model is this Corgi Toys Citroen DS. Unfortunately, I noticed when I got it home that it's got a big chip out of the paint, which I don't remember being there in the shop. So it's obviously happened in transit at some point, but uh, there you go. But I mean, it is a little bit battered elsewhere, so maybe I just didn't see that when I was in the shop. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. Again, I don't have a Corgi DS um, and the wheels are really nice all original the base is still good it still runs really nicely um, and there's no scratches on the perspex it's just a shame about that because that is actually really jarring to the eye um, but yeah otherwise for the colors it's a bright yellow body with a sort of almost orangey red colored roof and a silvery gray unpainted metal base last corgi model i bought today which has actually been in my mate shop for a while but i've just never really paid much attention to it is this oldsmobile super 88 us army staff car and i really appreciate this now um, i mean yes there's a little bit of the um star on the top decal missing but um other than that it's got hq star still printed on the bonnet um the decals on the doors are still pretty good um and yeah, it's still got, I think that's all of the aerial that was ever supposed, yeah, that was ever supposed to be there in the first place. The suspension is still good. The glass is in nice condition. There's a few little scratches here and there, but, you know, what are you going to do? This is nearly 60 years old. I have the Oldsmobile Super 88 version. That's the one, the Thrushbuster uh, from the Man From Uncle. Um, and I've got that with the box. But I've this is the only other one that I think Corgi did outside of that um, that range so yeah that is a really nice model and it's dark green I should say moving on to the first of the letter D model categories we have Diagostini and this is a model of a 1951 Porsche 356 light metal coupe and I know it's not that old this model um, but I just love it it looks like something so retro space age I love the spats on the wheels that are covering it it kind of looks like some sort of land speed record car or salt flats racer and that's one of the reasons why i love this so much it's got number 46 on a tampo print on the bonnet and on the boot as well all the lights are there they're little sort of plastic gems that are stuck into the body um and oh yeah and there's also number 46 on the doors and it's got a black plastic base and the body is a silver color 
Still staying with the letter D, we move on to Dinky Toys and the first of the Dinky Toys I bought, which was actually one that my mate put aside for me last time, is this Dinky Toys Land Rover with trailer. And this was the most expensive item I bought and I've got to be very careful, so let's, un let's detach the trailer. So I think the Land Rover is green. It's really, really nice and there's hardly any paint scuffs on this. The windscreen is in really good condition and of course it still has the driver and also the spare wheel I mean just just look at it it is it is pretty much immaculate and given that this is really old sort of late 40s early 50s that that's that's really really nice and here's the trailer and obviously the hook just attaches um, to the tow hook on the back and you've got obviously, obviously got all the name and the maker's mark underneath and I love the way that they've made it look like actual plank they've even got a little license plate on the back as well I've only just noticed that that is really really nice I'm sorry that a lot of these videos are just footage of me saying oh this is really really nice this is really really nice but um, yeah that's that's because, that's because these are really nice items. It doesn't actually say on the bottom what it is, and there's no real definitive answer as to what it is. Some people say it looks a bit like a Bentley. Other people say it looks like a bit of a, like an old Aston Martin. Um, but what we do know is that this is just pre-war. So this is... God, this is nearly about 90 years old and I mean just look at it this is this is immaculate especially considering its age and also that the tires are really good I mean to be fair well I, I was gonna say these might be repro tires but actually no and but this one might be one of the earliest dinkies to have detail on the undercarriage but yeah it is beautiful and the fact that the metal windscreen is still attached and the steering wheel actually as well and just the fact that it's been kept so pristinely yeah and that one is very rare and I've actually I, I remember seeing this one at a market stall a couple of months ago and not buying it then and then regretting it and wanted to find it ever since and so here we are today the last item from Dinky is boxed and it's this Trident Starfighter. There we go. And this is from the same sort of space agey range of um, Dinky Toys as the Zygon Marauder uh, that uh, my dad and his partner got me in box for Christmas. And but this one, the box is a little bit is well definitely worth a lot more worth for wear, but as seeing as the Perspex front is cracked and it has been opened but all the parts are here and it does mean that I can actually take it out and show you what it's like but it says on the, well the, I just love the box art on these um, but at the bottom in the bottom left corner it's got dinky die cast toys as it does in the top left corner and in the bottom right corner it says with firing stellar missile and then obviously we've got the thing on the front on the side it says 362 because that's the uh, serial number and Trident Starfighter and on the back it's oh look at that that artwork it's you see you don't get that on toys these days do you and it says Sp Space Duel and it's got a picture of the Zygon Marauder that I got for Christmas fighting against the Trident Starfighter that we've got here above some sort of planet um, obviously because it's in space but um, yeah I'll just get everything out and so that we can see it in more detail here it is out of the box and I should also just point out that they give you two spare missiles and it's really nice that uh, they actually still have the spare missiles in the box because obviously a lot of the time they go walkabouts but here is the Trident Starfighter. 
in all its glory. So we've got a missile ready to launch in the nose cone and we have two backup missiles in each one of the wings. Here is what I believe is the cockpit, it looks, actually looks like a pair of eyes. And that is the trigger button. So I will just demonstrate. If you press down, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna demonstrate its full firepower, but um, yeah, that just slots back in and it does fire. And at the back, you've got the tail fin with the main thruster. And there are also two little fins underneath and this. Now, I believe this is like a ladder to get in the cockpit to underneath, but it also back, yes it is, but it also backs up as landing gear. So you can prop it up like that. But I, there's something I really, really like about that. It's just so retro yet so futuristic at the same time. As for the colors, the whole body of the craft is cast out of a black metal and it's, it's actually quite heavy. I guess that's because of the uh, weight of the metal and the mechanism. All the missiles are cast out of a very, very vibrant, almost highlighter pen orange. And it has stickers on each of the wings of like little, well, and they're not really tridents. They're, I'm not really sure what's, what they are. And then it has on the tail fin on either side, um, a sticker of what looks like a three-tailed arrowhead. Now we move on to E for Ertl and something that is a bit of a nostalgia for me and for any other uh, British kids who used to watch this growing up. That'll do. Um, but yeah, it's an Ertl model of uh, Postman Pat's Royal Mail van. And um, obviously being a kid who grew up in England in the late 90s, early noughties, Postman Pat was pretty much one of my favorite programs, um, even though the ones that I used to watch were all mainly from the 80s when it first came out, when this was made. And But yeah, I digress. I'm so pleased that all the stickers, whilst they're a little bit frayed around the edges, that the stickers are still in relatively good nick i've i've just noticed i really love that um pat's cat jess is has got her paw up as if she's waving or put her paw on the glass but yeah it's still got the little number plate pat one on the front and it's a red royal mail van it's got the um the crown and er and it's got all the stickers on each side so obviously on the driver's side, Pat is closest to the window, and on the passenger side, Jess is closest. And yeah, not a lot else to say really. It's friction motor powered. And uh, yeah, and you can see there, it's got the Ertl logo, and the base is black plastic, and it has red hubcaps. Um, I don't remember Pat's van in the show actually having that. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway. That definitely wasn't an expensive item, but I just had to buy that just for the sake of nostalgia. Next up, we have Hasbro from H, and here we have, from Star Wars The Phantom Menace, a Republic Cruiser. And there's, some, there's something I really like about this design of ship, and um, it's really, really nicely detailed. I love how detailed the little plastic, sh I mean, yes, they're all plastic, but they're just like, I, I can't stress how much effort goes into getting all the detail into these things. It's kind of like a very burnt burgundy gray color. Um, and here's where the cockpit is. It's got like a little laser cannon on the top, laser cannon and radar on the top. And then here's the underside. And I will demonstrate in a minute, but um, it has working undercarriage, oops, at the front and at the back. So you can sit it down on the ground. And also there's a switch, which I couldn't work out at first what it did. But if you look at the, uh, the thrusters at the back, so it actually makes it look like the thrusters are on. So 
Sorry about that, headphone users. <laughs> I just thought I ought to de demonstrate that audibly. And then inside, the cockpit lifts up. And in there, we have a little minifigure of Qui-Gon G from, uh, yeah, played by L Liam Neeson. Yeah, I know a lot of die-hard Star Wars fans. I mean, I'm not a die-hard Star Wars fan myself, but I know a lot of die-hard fans say that The Phantom Menace was a bad film. But personally, as it was the very first Star Wars film that I watched, I actually think it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I haven't watched it for a while, but next time I see it on TV somewhere, I will definitely watch it again. And I'll just show you the box that it came in. This is the box that it came in. It ha it's got sort of a blue colour with lots of patterns in the background. And in the bottom left-hand corner, it says Star Wars Episode One, And then in several different languages, Republic Cruiser, Action Fleet, which is very similar to the Micro Galaxies Squadron series that um, is actually out now. They're very good, actually. I recommend it if you haven't seen it already. And then it's more of the same stuff on the side. And on the back is a demonstration of all the capabilities that I've just shown you. So Qui-Gon G, the cockpit opening, the fold-down undercarriage, and the uh, glowing thrusters, they call it. And at the bottom is a list of all the different ones that you can get. And on the right is a description of the, well, synopsis of the film, I suppose. Hasbro. Buy our toys! Also, from the letter H, we have Hot Wheels, and this is a 1970s, I want to believe, Chevrolet Corvette. Um, I can't remember exactly what sort of Corvette it is, but it's, um, it's, I mean, it's really nice. I know it's not a red line. It's made to, up to look like it has the red line wheels, but it's one of the later ones. And it's very, very, it's sort of that sparkly orangey colour, um, and it has good tampo printing on the front uh, it's got a, like a blue dart with lots of yellow stripes and yeah it's really nice it hasn't really got any suspension but obviously it's hot wheels uh, so it rolls really well so if hot wheels doesn't move very well what does you know um, and it's got a silvery gray base moving on to m first off we have majorette and this is a toyota light cruiser it looks like it looks a lot like those old um, Volkswagen camper vans from the 80s. And it's really nice. Very, very chunky. It's got good suspension. I like the, I quite like the way that they've given it um, sort of tinted orange windscreens. Um, I know that's a bit of a um, sort of childish thing to make it look cooler. But I do like that feature. It's still got all the tampo printed decals on the sides. Um, actually looks a bit like wings on the side. I'm not sure what that says. Um, the, it has a tow hook, which is still there and functional. And the only feature really of it is that uh, the tailgate opens. And hopefully you can see in there just about. It's got a little bit of um, baggage on the floor there. And it's silver with lots of red decals. And it has a silvery base. Also in M we have Matchbox Toys and this is a Matchbox Superfast Lamborghini Marzal concept in pink. I've got several different variants but uh, this is the only pink one that I've ever seen which is very rare. It's, it's a very very light pink shall we say and it has very very dark um, sort of almost mustard yellow perspex in the windscreens. And it has a silvery grey base with the thin super fast wheels. Um, but yes, I've got the I've got the orange version of this. I think I've got the dark red version and I've got the purple version. But this is the first time I've ever seen the pink version. Last one for Matchbox is this Matchbox International Aston Martin DB7. This is from one of the uh, special series that they did because it's got actual rubber tires and suspension it's yeah really nice it's very nicely painted um, it's, they've actually managed to paint in the lights for a change as well 
and um, it's got a very detailed interior that's in the correct colours as well. It's sort of got a, um, a tan brown interior with a silver silver body and a black plastic base. And it's even got a number plate as well. Um, oh yeah, 007. Um, I'm not, I'm not actually ever sure that James Bond did ever have a DB7, but uh, there you are. The only car that begins with the letter O is from Oxford Diecast, and this is a an Oxford Diecast 1 to 76 scale Humber Super Snipe. Um, yeah, I just saw this on uh, one of the cheaper shelves in my mate's uh, toy shop. I think my mate said it was like a light green colour, um, sort of almost a an avocado green, and yeah it's really nice I don't know if you can see that but I mean this is how detailed these are they've even got a little number plate on them um, but yeah and uh, these are if you don't know what these are these are basically supposed to go alongside double O gauge model railway layouts um, but yeah so it's got a um, sort of an avocado green body and a black plastic base Nearly there, friends. Just two more to go, both from the letter T, and this is from Tonka Toys. This is one of their 1970s mini models, and this is a little beach buggy. It's really, really sweet. Very, very hefty and, uh, um, well, robust, as you would expect Tonka Toys to be. It's got little white headlights at the front, a black metal base, and a blue metal body. Um, it's actually slightly, um, yeah, it's got a little bit of a metallic effect to it. Well, obviously, aside from the fact that it is metal. And it has a sort of a sandy beige coloured plastic roof. That um, I'm not going to try to see if it comes off. It has a black plastic steering wheel and same colour seat as the roof. Um, but yeah, there's no suspension on this. Um, but... It does roll well, if, if a little noisy, but yeah, that is really nice. And the last item from Trying is one of my very favourite things to get from my mate shop. It's a Trying Minix ship and it's of HMS Centaur, which, is, which was an aircraft carrier. And yeah, I know it's missing the one of the aerials off uh, the conning tower, I think. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's missing the aerial, the aerial mast off the conning tower. But apart from that, yes, it's a bit battered. But, you know, for two quid, when a good one of these would probably go for somewhere near, like, I don't know, nearly 70, 80, 90 in box, that's pretty good. And with that, that brings us to the end of the haul. One more item before we go. And I did buy this for my mate's vintage toy shop. I know it's not technically a toy, but it's to do with cars um, and at one point when I was at my mate's shop routing through one of the cheap trays he said to me do you want a badge and uh, I said what sort of badge so he passed me this this is a badge off the front of a Rover SD1 Vitesse one of my favorite cars um, from, from the 1980s yeah a little bit underrated car but the, apparently they went like stink so yeah, it's, it's just nice to have a, a Rover badge. Um, and you can see it's the uh, sort of like a very burgundy red with gold outlines. And it's of a Viking longboat. It's got the Rover name at the top in gold. And it's all on a black background. And so here is everything from my haul from my vin mate's vintage toy shop today. I hope you enjoyed the video. As ever, if you did like the video, don't forget to like and comment if you want. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more videos. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Take care. And if you can on those days, then you will win the rose. And your feet will become very sore. And you'll open up your window and you'll suddenly find that a peanut has knocked on your door. It doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense But if you understand this, then you're mad It doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense And the singing is also quite bad